You know it's true. It's too late. No, it's not. Leave here with me. Come home. Thank you. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. My name is John Doyle, and I am dressed and ready to play golf with President Trump, hopefully after he watches this video and realizes how much of an asset I would be to his 2020 campaign team, and then I could come back and actually give an honest report on whether or not he indeed cheats at golf. But uh, he'll see this. He'll see this. He watches my videos, or at least he says he does. But anyway, today we're going to have to talk about Joe Biden, Uncle Joe, the guy who, as we predicted earlier this year, was inevitably going to be outed as a creepy old man. Here's the thing. Joe Biden is a creepy old man. If Joe Biden is the nominee, the Democrats will not be able to make any mention of how Trump treats women. Because if they dare mention that Trump has allegedly had affairs with adult women, Donald Trump will just fire back with hours of footage of Joe Biden acting very strange around very young girls, making very strange comments, giving off very unsettling vibes. Take a look. It's a moment of real joy. There will be a link to that video in the description. That's from the analysis that we did of all the likely 2020 Democratic candidates back in the day. But, you know, it's a little outdated, but it's still good information. So basically what's happened is Joe Biden has been brought to the center of the news cycle because an allegation was made by a woman named Lucy Flores. She published an article a few days ago titled, An Awkward Kiss Changed How I Saw Joe Biden. And it gives a very detailed and vivid description of an encounter that allegedly transpired between her and Joe Biden during which Joe Biden is said to have approached her from behind, smelled her hair, and then kissed her on the back of the head. So she then writes that uh, this is the same boys will be boys behavior that she expects from white men because she's a young Latina woman, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then and this is the really important part. She's actually honest with her intentions here. She writes, quote, for years, I feared my experience would be dismissed. Biden will be Biden. Boys will be boys. I worried about the doubts, the threats, the insults, and the minimization. It's not that big of a deal. He touched her. So what? The immediate passing of judgment and the questioning of motives. Why now? Why so long after? She just wants attention, or it's politically motivated. I would be lying if I said I didn't carefully consider all this before deciding to speak, but hearing Biden's potential candidacy for president discussed without much talk about his troubling past as it relates to women became too much to keep bottled up any longer. So who is this woman, Lucy Flores? She was a member of the Nevada State Assembly from 2011 to 2015, and she was an unsuccessful candidate for lieutenant governor. And that's uh, during that candidacy is when this encounter with Joe Biden allegedly occurred. Another important piece of information here is that she endorsed Bernie Sanders in 2016, saying that the current system we have isn't working, blah, 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 sees the means of production. So Joe Biden released a statement saying basically that he does stuff like this all the time and he doesn't mean anything by it. And we know he does stuff like this all the time. We have hundreds of photos and videos to substantiate that. But whether or not he has perverted intentions is another question. But what's happening here is that Joe Biden is being usurped by the radical leftists that have asserted themselves within the Democratic Party. Joe Biden is going to fall victim to the same Me Too allegations that he sat idly by for when it benefited his party. Joe Biden flew too closely to the sun and unfortunately it's going to cost him. Right now, Joe Biden's up by like... 7.4 points over Bernie Sanders, who's the second most popular. I mean, does it really surprise you that a progressive woman that endorsed Bernie Sanders would pick now to come out and attack Joe Biden for making her feel uncomfortable? Not just uncomfortable, legitimately shocked and powerless. Look at this interview that she did on CNN about it. To touch you and to feel you and to be so close to you in that way. So I frankly just didn't even know how to react. I was just shocked. I, I, felt, I felt powerless. I felt like I couldn't move. I, I just didn't even know how to process it. Now, if you think these people don't strategize, think more. I mean, everything you see on your TV is a calculated decision. Notice what she did here. She comes out with it and she employs it as a method of reopening the discussion about powerful men taking advantage of women. And of course, this connotes images of Harvey Weinstein and Roman Polanski, people that we saw go down during the height of the Me Too movement. But she also doesn't say it. She doesn't hyperbolize it. She doesn't say that anything happened between her and Joe Biden that we wouldn't already expect from Joe Biden. And then she toes the line with how upset she is about it to where it's still believable on her part. I, of course, I don't know if this actually happened. Joe Biden has come out and said that he didn't act inappropriately towards her, but 
<laughs> that then we have to ask the question of what is Joe Biden's definition of what is appropriate behavior? And so the point that I'm making is that if she were to have made this a big deal, if she went on CNN crying about how violated she felt, some on the fence Democrats, the old school types, they'd be like, no, that's not realistic. I'm going to stick with Joe Biden. Thank you very much. But she has instead she just perniciously introduces this idea of like, hey, maybe Joe Biden is a creep. Maybe Barack Obama's bestie isn't that suited for public office. She's reintroducing it into the conversation without making any damning accusations. And it's going to allow the rest of the radical left to eat Joe Biden. And Joe Biden will have little choice but to sit there and take it. Kind of like during the Senate confirmation of Justice Clarence Thomas. And this one's kind of fun. So basically what's happening now, Joe Biden, he was the chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee during the Clarence Thomas confirmation, which is when Anita Hill came forward with allegations that Clarence Thomas had made unwelcome sexual comments towards her when they worked together at the Department of Education. So now the left is resurfacing that and attacking Joe Biden for allowing his constituents on the committee to attack Anita Hill. And here's the best part. This is truly the best part. So they're trying to get Biden to apologize for failing to protect Anita Hill during the hearing and therefore failing to protect women. And they're reprinting these really hostile questions that were asked to Anita Hill, such as the one from then Senator Howell Heflin, who asked her, quote, in trying to determine whether you are telling falsehoods or not, I've got to determine what your motivation might be. He said, are you a scorned woman? Do you have a martyr complex? Do you see yourself coming out of this? Is a hero in a civil rights movement. The part that I like about this is the way the media is reporting it because Howell Heflin was a Democrat. Joe Biden is a Democrat. More than half the Judiciary Committee at the time that was grilling her were Democrats. And so the media is like, hmm, let's just focus on the fact that they were all white and all men. Yeah, let's do that. That's better. This way we still get a victory for the narrative. You're Get a white male! You're a white man! And that's the problem. Joe Biden doesn't fit the narrative. Joe Biden hasn't exactly been outspoken about any of the issues that have been circulating in the country for the last three years, and the left knows that. He hasn't gone on record with an updated healthcare policy since the ACA. He hasn't provided a concrete and updated position on climate change, unless you count uh, a few tweets written by staffers that were meant to virtue signal. And his economic policies, they're inclusive, yes, but they aren't driven by identity politics in the way that the radical left wishes that they were. And because of that, even though Biden is likely their best chance at victory in 2020, they want him out. The reason that Joe Biden is leading in the polls, the reason that Joe Biden, or sorry, Howard Schultz has found support is because there's a large faction of the Democratic Party that isn't ready or willing to embrace the neo-Marxism of the current DNC. But is the DNC willing to reconsider, maybe strategize? No. If you want to instill a utopia, you got to crack a few eggs. And that Joe Biden, that means you, big guy. I'm sorry, you were on borrowed time the moment you entered into politics as a Democrat and then happened to be a white man. It's a new day. Step aside, Joe. You're Comparatively moderate policies have no home in this party anymore. I'm sorry. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and leave it a comment right away so the algorithm picks it up and Donald Trump sees it, then I can play golf with Donald Trump. And uh, also subscribe if you haven't already and share this video with all your friends, once again, so I can play golf with Donald Trump. That's uh, that's actually, that, that this whole thing was started for two reasons. One, so I could charity box Mark Zuckerberg, and two, so I could play golf with Donald Trump. After those two things are completed, I my character arch will be complete. I can fade away into the distance like what's his face? Chris, I think at the end of Stand By Me, remember he's walking away and he just kind of fades away. I think his name was Chris. That's, that's what I'm going to do. Or uh, in uh, Infinity War, they just like, you know, fade away and like disintegrate into the atmosphere. But I'm not going to be like, I don't want to go. I'm going to be like, I'm ready to go. I've done what I needed to do in this timeline. I played golf with Donald Trump. I charity boxed Mark Zuckerberg. Like I'll be content. You know, I'm a glasses half full kind of guy. But uh, thank you so much for watching and may God bless America.